What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Game Awards 2022. I'm going to go through uh, all the winners of the categories and then going to go through all the announcements and world premieres uh, that we got. Um, so I didn't get to live stream this event. Usually I live stream the Game Awards every year, but I wasn't home. Um, you know, I always enjoy interacting with the chat and reacting to all the announcements and the winners in real time. But like I said, wasn't able to do that. So doing this review um, instead. So uh, first of all, Jeff Keighley, I think this show, e even though I wasn't home, I was like intermittently checking um, the show on my phone and feel like didn't it start like at seven or seven thirty? Maybe it was eight, but I feel like it started at seven, seven thirty. And I'm like, I, I I feel like the show ended like at twelve. Maybe that's my imagination. I don't know. But the show still seemed pretty long and the length that it was previous years, even though Jeff Keeley said that it was gonna be shorter. Um Jeff Keeley, he be he be hyping and lying his own show all the time, by the way. Um from what I did see, there seemed to be a little less fluff. You know, and all, all those uh, shenanigans and 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 ad and forced advertisements that we saw on previous shows, S some of that seems to be removed. So I guess he gets some points for that. So first, let's uh, let me switch to my other screen and let's talk about the winners of the uh, the winners of the Game Awards 2022. Uh, so, um, where are we starting? Uh, so I'm going to talk about the ones that I I care about i didn't even remember seeing this category before best adaptation celebrating game inspired projects across entertainment including tv movie comics and more arcane league of legends won that don't really care about that category but just mention it because i don't i don't remember seeing it before uh, most anticipated game um recognizing an announced game that has demonstrated uh d demonstrably uh illustrated potential to push gaming medium forward legend of zelda tears of the kingdom that is obvious that uh, that that was going to win Whenever there is a Zelda game, if it's going to be nominated in anything, it's 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 going to win a few of few of those uh, awards, right? This game, like this game, is coming out next year. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it doesn't win Game of the Year. It definitely wins some some awards, but I'm gonna go out on a limb right now. Mark it on your calendar. BG said the 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 uh, the the ninth of December that. Tears of the Kingdom is not going to be Game of the Year uh, next year. Um, I just think the the amazement that some people uh, encountered and and and, and um, felt from the you know Breath of the Wild, I feel like it's the game is just going to be just as great, but the effect won't be as strong. Um, but of course, you know, uh, Legend of Zelda won most anticipated game, of course. Uh, mine would be Resident Evil 4, of course. Y'all know I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Uh, best, we're skipping this esports stuff. Let's not waste our time. Nobody cares about this. Um, content creator of the year. We know they forced Nebelian into this. He had no busy business being in this category simply because the category is content creator. If you look up the two definitions of those words, right, and you put them together, that is not what Nebelian does. Not saying what he does, we don't love. You know, the, the, the damn bastard needs to come back and do what people liked him for. Once again, I talked about this in another video and, and several times. Like, I don't know what he thought he was. He was a, a, a Cliff Notes guy, you know. He was, a, he was our bullet point, bullet point gaming guy, and there's nothing wrong with that. We appreciate that. There's value in that. But he's not this. And this was a sympathy, uh, sympathy nomination that they gave him. Like, that's bull crap. Y'all only gave him this because he he announced he was leaving and because he's been doing this for years and y'all suddenly nominate him um, when he's leaving. And there's other people in the community that, that do this, by the way. So uh, Ludwig, Ludwig, Ludwig won, um, but usually, usually I never have any idea who any of the content creators are in the category because I don't watch big, I don't watch big YouTubers like all the channels I'm subscribed to as far as content creators, bro, they 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 probably have almost barely any subscribers. They're not like, I don't think I watch anybody that's considered a big YouTuber. Anybody. Just because their content just doesn't appease to me. I like like I like mo motherfuckers on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like I I, I like that 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 real shit. 
And you're not going to find that real shit, that real type of content from a lot of these big uh, content creators, right? So that's why they, they just throw their content just doesn't do anything for me. Best multiplayer game, Splatoon 3. Absolutely deserve to win that. Splatoon 3 is, is an amazing multiplayer game. Myself, you know, I, I, I lauded this game all, you know, all year since it came out. It absolutely deserves it. I, I, I love that game. Um, best sim strategy game, Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. This was my winner also. Uh, Nintendo was great to me this year, right? Um, even though, uh, it, it's funny, the Nintendo Switch in the past two years has been the best for me. The games that came out like prior to that, because you know the Switch. What? How long has Switch been out now? Like I feel like five years or something like that. I don't know. Um, the games in the first three years, like yeah, eh, didn't really do anything for me. It's the last two years when the Switch finally started to cater to certain games that I like. I think I bought like six uh, Nintendo games this year and beat them all. The only disappointment was Pokemon. Um, so, and I absolutely love Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Um, love that game. Uh, beat it. You know, it's gonna be in my top games. Uh, my top 10 games of like 2022 absolutely so that was my winner for that for that category the best sports racing game Gran Turismo 7 won that I don't play racing games I don't play sports games so I have no input uh, input on that um, but I, I would it would be very interesting even though this would probably never no 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 yeah I guess the chances of it happening are, are slim um, I would like to see uh, when Gran Turismo um, and Forza are uh, come out in, in, in one year, who would win that? I don't know if it's happened before, if they both were in, uh, you know, the same category. Because, you know, Gran Turismo drops a lot less, a uh, lot less frequently than Forza. Um, Forza, you know, they have two, they have the two series, you know, Horizon and then the Forza mainline series, and they kind of alternate. Um, they don't come out like, you know, every year, one after another, but like, what is it, every three years or four years or something like that and Gran Turismo comes out even less so the pattern that they're on they're on doesn't really usually line up but I would like to see that um because you know people always debate oh what you know what game is better you know Gran uh Gran Turismo or the mainline Forza series I don't know I don't play them joints um best family game which is usually uh <laughs> relegated to the Nintendo games usually the Nintendo games always dominate that every single year um it's kirby in the forgotten land um yeah i would agree with that i'm not i'm not mad at that i that's one of the nintendo games i beat this year and i think i think kirby is one of the is one of the more is one of the less relevant um nintendo ips that is is honestly not that great but i actually enjoyed kirby in the forgotten land and yeah i i, I liked it I beat that. Uh, best fighting game. It was controversy, of course, because Sifu is in this category, and of course, it's not a fighting game. Um, but Multiverses won that, and and even though the hype of Multiverses is, have has seen to severely, at least in my purview, fallen off a cliff, it was really hot um, for its time, and I'm sure pe some people are still playing. I just haven't seen that same amount of like hype and, and energy for it continue. Best RPG, of course, Elden Ring was gonna gonna win that. Um, def, I, I think it deserves that. Definitely, uh, I definitely agree. Um, versus everything else, I mean, I. But honestly, I didn't I didn't play anything else in this category though. I didn't. I have Triangle Strategy, haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, but yeah, Elden Ring is the only one I played, so I agree with that. Best action adventure game, uh, God of War Ragnarok. So as we speak, I'm still I'm still playing God of War Ragnarok, only, and I only haven't beaten it yet, uh, is because when it came out, I was I was in San Francisco for like five days, five six days. So I was like way behind everybody else who uh, had all this extra time to play. I was like, damn, I gotta you know I gotta leave the game and everything for, and then some shit happened when I came back. You know, just busy with life, so. Um, but now I've been playing it like, you know, goddamn seven hours a day. So now I'm like, I would say 70% through the through the game, loving it. And it's my personal game of the year, by the way. Um, and initially, when because I've given my definition of action adventure game, right? I, I, action adventure game is really a game that takes you on an like I feel like an epic and long journey. Like you feel like you really experienced 
um, some a, a lot um, and a lot of uh, locations and, and, and a lot of different experiences and, and combat and locations like it ta- it literally takes you on a, a journey. Um, and initially, I had said that Horizon Forbidden West did does that a little bit more than God of War. And I still think, you know, Horizon Forbidden West takes you on more of a journey then God of War, even, you know, uh, even now. Because the the realms that you go to, I don't know. The realms in, in God of War, they're they're great. I enjoy them, but they're still they still feel like little pockets, I guess you you could say. I don't necessarily feel I feel it feels like more like in God of War, the different realms feels feel like boroughs in New York. You know what I'm saying? I don't really feel like I'm leaving New York. When I when I go to you know I'm not leaving New York when I go to Queens or the or the Bronx I'm still in New York and that's how the different realms feel uh, in in um you know in God of War I'm still in the same world of just going to different boroughs where you could yeah you could make the case that Horizon Forbidden Be- Forbidden West is like this one big ass island and coastline but I don't know it just Horizon just felt like more of a journey to me is 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 my point um. So I would actually, I actually would would have given that to Horizon Forbidden West, uh, but obviously I'm not mad at God of War Ragnarok winning that. Um, and best action game goes to Bayonetta three. Uh, Bayonetta three is garbage, y'all know, y'all know I'm a that's that's my stance. That that game is trash. I would have given that to Sifu, um, or TMNT. Uh, innovation and accessibility, God of War Ragnarok won that. I think God of War Ragnarok ended up leaving with like six awards. I think it won. It it kind of did like a. Is that a? Is it still con- considered a sweep if you don't win the biggest final award? I because I, I think uh, I'm not sure because if you let's say you win like the most awards but you don't win the biggest one, I, is is that still a sweep? No, I'm, you know I think it should be. I'm not sure though. Um, but yeah, God of War and you know PlayStation, um, they definitely left with with a good amount of uh, awards. Uh, they had a, they had the most nominations, um, if I'm not mistaken. Best VR AR game, Moss Book Two, which by the way they just announced that uh, the developers announced that Moss Book Two will be supported on PSVR uh, Two. Um, they're updating the game and making making it combat- compatible. And I, I'm I'm excited for PSVR 2, have it pre-ordered and everything like that. I've looked at the gameplay of Moss Book 2. It's not the type of VR game I would be into. But I always hear, you know, VR guys praise it. But it's not it's not something I would think I would play or enjoy. Best community support, Final Fantasy 14. Um, that, that Final Fantasy 14 story is is, I mean, the, the story of like how it started out. And what it is now, like that's that that game started out in, in like one of the worst conditions um, an online game has ever been. Right. That's that's the story of it. Like it was terrible at launch and the work they've done since that thing, since, since that game has come came out is nothing short of a, of a miracle. So, yeah, um, good for them, I guess. Best mobile game, Marvel Snap. I ain't going to play no no mobile game, but uh, I have heard good things about Marvel Snap. Uh, best debut indie game goes to Stray. Really like Stray, so I'm I'm not I, and I didn't play anything else in this category. So yeah, Stray would be my winner. Best indie game. Um, oh no, this is whoa! Time out, time. Don't y'all y'all disrespected Sifu. Sifu was really fucking good, bro. Like Sifu, Sifu had no business being how being as good as it was. So I agree with debut indie game being Stray. Right, but best indie game? No, no. Listen, I'm a cat person. I, I got, I got, I got me and my wife. We got two cats, right? So I and and I told people, a a a game. It's it, it's it's amazing as as much as cats are as much as a uh, as much as how popular cats are, especially on the internet, and how crazy pet owners are. They they say if you want to make um want to make you know get into business one of the best things you can do is sell pet products because pet owners will buy almost anything they're insane right they say it's one of the one of the safest industries to like venture into 
uh, is to come up with your own pet line of pet products. Because like I said, pet owners create will, will buy anything for their pets and shit like that. Um, so it's it's crazy that nobody up until this point thought like, hey, let's make a game where you play as a cat. That should be a shoe in Nobody's even come up with like has made a game where you play as a dog yet. That should be a, a, a shoe in That should be an easy sell. Right. Um, so I told people y'all y'all sleeping. This game is this game is going to do very well. It's going to review very, review very well, probably sell very well, and it's going to win a, win a, awards. And I told people that I'm like, don't sleep on this game. But Sifu should absolutely win um, best indie game. Um, so, yeah, best ongoing game. But what the hell is the difference between best? OK, community oh, that was community support. So, yeah, best, I guess, ongoing game and community support should align. So that went to Final Fantasy 14 also. Games for Impact, as Dust Falls. I didn't play any of these games. I guess that means I don't give a damn about thought-provoking games with pro-social meaning or messages. Nah, I definitely don't. I don't give a damn about any games I do that. Uh, best Performance went to Christopher Judge, God of War Ragnarok. Uh, and he definitely did an amazing, amazing job. Like I said, I'm 70% through God of War Ragnarok. I, I do think um, Sonny Suljic has just really improved and uh came into his own as an actor like you can see uh through his dialogue and his uh you know his voice work um in Ragnarok how much he grown since um and evolved since uh you know the the uh, since God of War 2018 so I actually think that could have gone to um Sonny Soljic but yeah the the emotion and the range that Kratos showed in Ragnarok was more than we've ever seen, you know, in, in past, you know, God of War games. Of course, you know, in the original trilogy, he didn't show that much emotion. He, it was just kind of anger all the damn time. And so we saw more emotion in 2018. But this part, we've seen more than we've ever, you know, seen. Like, I mean, even Kratos cracking a smile is range. And, you know, but but being able to portray that and it still feel and seem like Kratos, you know, is is impressive shit. Um. So yeah, uh, and I heard he took like ten minutes. I think I, 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 he took like ten minutes on his award speech for this, for whatever reason. And apparent, I think he said on Twitter, "Oh, he still wasn't done, bro. Why are you talking for that long? Like what? That's nuts, bro. I, I'm shocked they even let you talk that long. Um, I haven't listened to it. I don't know what the hell he was saying. I'm not about to listen to this man's speech for no ten minutes." But uh, yeah, he won that. Um, best audio design, God or Ragnarok. I actually don't don't agree with this. Um, God or Ragnarok, the sound is great, audio is great, but I wouldn't say there's anything in the game that makes me makes me feel that it's it's not stand out to me. It's on the top level of what Sony Santa Monica does, but it's not like stand out out you know just amazing spectacular best audio you know it's it's great it's it's aligned with what they've always done you know i don't think i just don't think it's outstanding um or, or exceptional i kind of honestly would have given that to uh listen modern warfare too I'm, I'm sorry like listen call of duty people may i don't know if people think i'm crazy but call of duty there was a point where they always talked about how they're uh, improving and evolving the game as, as, as far as visuals and audio, and it was complete bullshit. But there was a point where they actually started doing it as far as like animation work, sound work, audio design. And yeah, I, I think I would have gave that to Call of Duty, honestly. And y'all know I'm not a Call of Duty person. Um, best score in music, um, also known as the category I do not give a damn about. Um, I care about audio design as far as like the game sound, but I don't give a fuck about score or music. I couldn't tell you what any of the music was like in any of these games. And I played three of these games. I couldn't tell you what the music was like. Music to me is just like I tone it out because to me, people will disagree with me. But to me, in modern day gaming. Music is just and the score is just not memorable. It doesn't have the same effect where back in the day when a music, when music or a score played, 
you would automatically link it to a certain game. You didn't even you didn't even want to, right? You didn't even have to try to pay attention to music. You just know if you heard a certain sound, a certain game came to mind. To me, in modern day games, that just does not happen for me. The music just feels, it's not that the music is bad, but it just doesn't sound iconic and like exceptional where it's sound where it's to the point where this music doesn't sound like anything else I've heard. You know what I'm saying? So I can, so when it's when it's something like nothing else I've heard, I can always link it to a game, right? Um, and I just don't really think games do that for me. So I don't really care about scoring music, but God of War Ragnarok won that. Bear McCreary. I couldn't tell you nothing. I couldn't make a sound. I couldn't hum shit about, you know, what what a, what any of the score or music was in God of War. Couldn't tell you. No idea. And I've been playing the game with with some really good headphones. Couldn't tell you what the music is like. No idea. Um, best art direction. Elden Ring won this. Now, I disagree with this. Now, El now art direction isn't about, like, photorealistic visuals. It's not necessarily the best visuals. That's That's not what art direction is, but I just still don't agree with it. For their description, they say for its outstanding creative or technical achievement in art, artistic design and animation. And artistic design can be anything, right? It's not photorealism. That's why, you know, art is subjective, you know? Um, so it, it's really an art, which is called art style. You know, art styles could be, uh, you know, are obviously very very different. Um, both games could have high visual fidelity, but depending on the art style, one could look better than the other. So it's hard to really decipher, okay, based on it, based on an art style, does this game look better than the, look better than the other one? And that's what sparks a lot of debate in the community. But as I said, art direction isn't about necessarily the most crispy uh, visuals. It's just about um, what art style and art direction um, and animation uh, really stood out and was a huge technical achievement. And to me, that's still not that's still not Elden Ring because, like, my thing is, if you if you're gonna choose Elden Ring for some of these categories, then why did you ignore Dark Souls and and the uh, Soul series uh, prior to Elden Ring? Um, and of course, my cat wants to make make an entrance, right? Because a lot of the things that Elden Ring did. Past Souls games also did. Yeah, Elden Ring may have done it on another level, uh, but it's not like this huge disparity and difference from um, what Elden Ring did in certain circumstances versus pr prior Souls games. Like, Elden Ring literally reuses assets. We know that. a lot. In, in a lot of games, you, you reuse assets, right? There's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but, like, the Souls series has been reusing assets from, like, very early games, like, a lot of years ago, right? So sometimes i'm pretty sure even with some of the sound um so that's why i just kind of disagree with the you know i i honestly i'm sorry i i would give that to uh horizon forbidden west um i just think the the art direction and the uh the architecture of horizon also and especially on a technical level you could see, you know, people could have their opinion and feel what they feel what they want about Horizon. Horizon is the most technically advanced game that came out this year. Whether, regardless of what you feel about the story, uh, you know, the, the gameplay, it's the most technically advanced game this year. That's, I don't think that's really that debatable. Um, so yeah, I just would go with Horizon for that one. Uh, best narrative, uh, God of War Ragnarok. I'm far enough in in God of War Ragnarok to say, yeah, that's absolutely true. No debate. Um, I did. I haven't played Immortality. I uh, haven't played a Plague's Tale Requ Requiem because uh, I didn't play the first one, and it's just not a game that interests me. Um, so yeah, I absolutely agree. God of Ragnarok. They've took the storytelling even to a higher level than before. Um, it's it's just the amount of dialogue in that game, especially. I think like I told people, I think Mimir is probably one of the most important characters in God of Ragnarok, and in, in just in the new God of War reboot, like. If I, I think most some of the most interesting and just captivating dialogue comes from fucking Mimir because he's the most knowledgeable person in that realm, you know, in those realms, in that world. So um 
he's I think he's one of the, just the best characters in general. Uh, and then we get to best game direction goes to Elden Ring, awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and game design. So this is this predictably went to Elden Ring because, like I said last night in a tweet, um, the masses believe that what was done in Elden Ring was innovative and is bringing gaming in, in a direction that where people believe they want gaming to go, right? Because remember, the narrative when Elden Ring came out was Elden Ring is giving you freedom. Um, it's not taking the conventional and traditional path that other games uh, do. Uh, and that's what we want in gaming. We don't want gaming to hold our hand. We don't want we we're shaming uh, games that are non that are uh, that are linear and we want nonlinear now. Um, and that was that was the narrative uh, that Elden Ring produced. And I say gamers claim some, you know, the narrative with the game is claim they want that, but I don't really believe if they actually want that. Um, I think Elden Ring just gave them that sense that, you know, that they really enjoyed it. So they think they want it completely and, and in absolute now when that's not the case. I think if every game was like Elden Ring, gamers would hate it, right? So I think you can appreciate it in Elden Ring while also understanding, okay, I don't want all my games to fucking be like this, though, right? Um, and some games are better better uh, linear and and slightly uh, guided, not holding your hand, but slightly guided and, 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 and going down a certain path. Because I'm, I said, I platinum Elden Ring. I don't want all Souls games to be um, open world. Like I was very, I was very fatigued of, of Elden Ring by the time I got to what's that damn palace that like kingdom. It was like very, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. It, it's like, I don't, I don't remember that, that damn uh, area is called, but it was like a, it's like a gold area. It's like a kingdom and shit. Um, and it almost seemed, it almost felt like the game was going to end there, but then you have to go a little bit further. And I think you got to come back to it for some, some, for some reason, people gonna know what I'm talking about, but I, but. I'm like, okay, I think this game is getting a, a very long in the tooth at this point. And, you know, they had reused certain bosses and, and shit like that. So me, I still prefer my 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 Souls games to be the original formula and be the original way that it was where it's like linear and hub world type shit. I don't want all Souls games to be, you know, um, that open world path now. I, I don't want that. Um, and But like I said, the masses believed that this was something innovative that was kind of in a way never done before when I don't really feel that way. I don't feel that way. Like I don't feel that Elden Ring was innovative. It was just dark souls in an open world game. If you want to say dark souls in an open world game has, has never been done before, that would be accurate. But to say the game did something that like games in general hasn't done before. I don't think that's accurate. And, and as we know, Elden Ring, what is it sold at this point? Like, it's the best-selling game of the year, maybe under Call of Duty, because, you know, if Call of Duty just ends up beating, beating everything, but Elden Ring is probably second. And I don't, it, what is it, sold 20-plus million by now? The, the soul, the, at least the Dark Souls series, even if you include Demon Souls, all the, four of those games combined still doesn't uh, accumulate to what Elden Ring sold. So what does that tell you? That tells you that a lot of people's, a lot of people playing Elden Ring are people who have never played a Souls game before. So if you've never played a Souls game before and you play Elden Ring, you're thinking, oh, man, this is some innovative shit. I've never experienced this before. You get what I'm saying? To me, who's beaten all these Souls games, not only like Dark Souls, Demon Souls, I've beaten, Lord of, I've beaten the trash shit even. Like, you know, Lord of the Fallen. Uh, there was uh, that cell shaded anime um, Souls game. I've beaten more Souls style games than I can fucking remember. Right? So to me... This shit was not innovative. It was just Dark Souls in an open world, which was, you know, the Dark the Souls formula, which I love, was just very familiar. Uh, so yeah. Um, but I don't. But I think innovation is overrated. Honestly, I say it all the time, and I don't think any of these games do anything innovative. If I'm going strictly based on what gameplay I enjoy enjoyed the most. Then it'll be God of War Ragnarok. 
simply if it's simply based on gameplay i enjoyed the most which is not necessarily the description of what this category is but i, I think god of war had the best gameplay uh and you know and i consider that i i mean that by saying gameplay mechanics you know as far as like the gameplay mechanics the combos the systems all that yeah i, I would give it to god of war ragnarok game of the year the game that usually wins game direction usually wins game of the year sometimes not all not always the case but a lot of the times or the studio or if uh was there a studio of the year nominee here uh, category i don't remember i don't remember if i mentioned it but usually for who who if they have a uh, studio of the year or developer of the year that would make sense that also the same wins game of the year um and of course it went to elder it went to elder ring I said that I don't think there's any doubt that Elden Ring um, will win for the reasons that I uh, mentioned before about game direction. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts. So now, after 30 minutes, we're going to, this is damn near like a podcast. Uh, so after 30 minutes, we're going to talk about all the things that were announced and um, all the world, world premieres. So, um, I don't know if this, uh, I'm at IGN, I've been in IGN for all this shit. I'm not sure if, uh, this is the chronological order of how it happened at the Game Awards, but we're going to go through them. So, Final Fantasy 16, I'm going to try to keep, you know, my summary of all this stuff and my thoughts about it short because I don't want to be here all day. Um, Final Fantasy 16, got a June 2023 release date. Um, I'm not the most excited about Final Fantasy 16 setting, but I'm absolutely still excited about the gameplay and the story. Um, and I, I definitely, and, and this is, this, this game is still only announced for PS5, not even on PC, which I, I guess I would assume if you're not going to put this game on PC, because most games that are, that are console, ex, you know, like actual exclusives, third party exclusives don't really exist anymore. And I mean, by like games, made by third party or second party partners um, that are literally only on the console and not on PC, that doesn't really happen anymore. Usually they're just excluding one console. But I think the, the most recent information we have is this is not even going to be on PC um, on release. It's only PS5. And I guess that's probably because I think this game is just very... Uh, the scale and scope of it is is very big and they really wanted to make sure they optimize it first and created the best version um initial version for ps5 and then um make sure the pc version is also the best i i would assume that's that's the only reason i can think because i don't think sony is really paying to keep uh anything off of pc that is doesn't line up with this wouldn't make sense um but yeah uh i look forward to final fantasy 16 um yeah, to gameplay in the story, but not I'm not crazy about uh, the setting. And I will say that as of right now, what is it like? Maybe two or three first party PlayStation games that are that are absolutely coming out for 2023. Um, I think we're, I think we're going to get a lot of announcements for for PlayStation first party games in 2023. But I don't think it's going to be uh, the major games. Major first party games are definitely not going to be uh, as uh, present in 20 you know as as it was in 2022 and 2023 and i think they're going to make up for that in their in their partnerships um and the reason i think we're going to get a, a lot of announcements is because if you believe the rumors that both microsoft and sony are like kind of sandbagging themselves and making the and making the other companies uh sound way better and bigger and badder than the other than then the other one is because, you know, this acquisition shit that's going on and they're not trying to make themselves look too good, look too strong and shit. So there's the there's the theory and rumor that they've been withholding a lot of information. And I actually believe this. It actually makes sense if you if you think of, if you think about it. And there's some clues and evidence that points to that they that they've been withholding a lot of stuff that they could announce. Um, so once the ABK deal is done and I don't give a fuck which way you know, which direction it really goes in. Um, I just want it to get done because I'm tired of hearing about it and it doesn't affect me. I don't give a damn. Then we'll probably get the announcements. But I hope like this shit, because like what the FTC is suing or some shit. Now this might elongate the process. So 
I would hope they're they're not actually going to withhold everything they have. They can't do it that long. Like there has to be a limit. So moving on. Um, from software revealed Armored Core six fires of Rubicon. I don't really have any. I don't really have any experience with Armored Core games. I think I played like a demo back in the day, but I don't. I'm pretty indifferent about this. Um, Hades two. Um, Hades is a uh, that that one did that one game of the year. When it, one, of, one of the years it came out, the year it came out, I'm not sure. I, I know it was probably nominated, but, you know, Hades is a very uh, a highly uh, regarded game, very praised. Gamers love it. So I look forward to uh, Hades, too. Um, gameplay looks good. Super giant um, games do their thing. And it's coming to early access in uh, 2023. Cool. Um, Kevin Levine's next game. Kevin Levine is the creator of Bioshock. Uh, and we've been hearing about this game for a hell of a long time. We've been like, yo, what is going on? Um, is it actually going to happen? And it pretty much looks like Bioshock in space. I'm very interested. It, it, it literally seems like it's coming from that, uh, that cloth of Bioshock. So, um, and it's called Judas. Definitely looking forward to it. Excited about that. Um, what else? Death Stranding 2. Y'all know I'm a Death Strang Stranding hater. Proud of it. Leader, leader of the Death Stranding hating club. I wish nothing but turmoil and terrible things for this franchise. Okay, I absolutely hate it. And I can't stand Kojima. I don't hate Kojima. I just don't care about his recent work. I think his, I think this, you know, listen. And Death Stranding 2 is probably going to be better than Death Stranding 1. Maybe it, the combat and, and the gaming direction might be a little different. Maybe, maybe it'll be less of uh mailman you know ups simulator but if it's like an actual sequel that connects to the original i probably won't be playing it probably won't buy it um because i don't like playing the sequels for if i didn't play the original so uh, that's probably a skit for me um and hideo kojima had rewrote rewrote uh death stranding 2 after the pandemic okay um idris elba is going to be in cyberpunk 2020 2077 Phantom uh, Liberty, that's the DLC, I believe. Yeah, um, I don't give a damn about Cyberpunk, so no, no comment on that. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, that looks really good. Uh, I already watched these trailers, of course. Um, and we saw Cal Kestis, he looking a little bit, little, looking a little bit older, you know, boy growing up and everything like that. I, I really hope we see a live action um, Cal Kestis in one of these uh, upcoming. Um, Star Wars shows, uh, but the gameplay looks pretty cool. He's doing some cool jet, new Jedi tricks and shit. The story in the first one was really good. Uh, really underrated game, honestly. Um, and it's one of those games where the review is like, what is it? Is it like seventy five on Metacritic? But everybody loves the game. Um, I don't know anybody who didn't really didn't really like it like that. So definitely look forward to this. Uh, look, it's looking good. Diablo 4, uh, coming June 6, 2023. Don't really care. I'm just I, I, not into Diablo. Uh, Street Fighter 6 coming out June 2nd, 2023. Uh, so good date. They showed uh, some new characters, uh, well, returning characters. DJ, um, DJ's a returning character, and we got some new ones. Um, Man and Marissa JP. I think uh, well, one of them is also a returning character. I don't think the rest of them are are new um so this is gonna have uh this street fighter seems to have a you know a few more um obscure characters from the uh from the series and uh june yeah so that's like right before e3 i mean not e3 um evo um but it probably won't be a main evo event because they usually like players i think to have the game uh for a while uh, you'll probably still see like a like a small. They'll probably still play it at Evo, but it, I, I think they usually do like mini tournaments or or some shit like that. It probably won't actually be a main event, I think, because it'll, it, because it'll be too close to the event, um, the actual Evo event, the, that release date. Um, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, so we learned that Kevin Conroy actually did his last performance before he passed away in Suicide Squad: Kill the Justice League. Um, so that's that's great to hear. You know, this trailer was pretty much a tribute. Uh, he, it seemed to me that the Justice League might be under some type of mind control. 
because Batman's eyes were, I think his eyes were purple in the trailer, right? And they 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 had already captured Flash and and everything like that, and um, it seems like uh, maybe the maybe the story. I don't know if they actually reveal the the story of, or the plot of the game, but it, it could it be that you know the Justice League is under mind control, uh, so you have to take them down. Would you know that that could be the the story the storyline. Um, and and it's funny because Justice League. I think that was. That was the premise of Justice League's do- Justice League Doom Day, Doomsday as to why uh, Batman created uh, this plan uh, to and, and uh, you know some protocol to take down the Justice League just in case anybody ever became came under mind control or went rogue and shit like that. So Batman actually has a plan for this. Prep time, Batman still goaded. Uh, what else? So yeah, I look forward to um. Suicide Squad uh, killed the Justice League. We've been waiting for this game a long time. We got to see some uh, pipe travel. That sounds pause worthy uh, for the Mario Bros. movie. Um, we got to see Tekken Eight. Jin Kazama's mother was in was in the trailer. Uh, so good time for fighting games. Um, Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC was announced in this PS5 only. Interesting. I think. This is saying, hey, we put the original game on PS4, but listen, if you want to play the DLC, we did you a service by putting it on PS4, but now it's time to to uh, move on to PS5, especially since you could just upgrade, and especially since PS5s are becoming more and more available. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see if, since this is only developed for, for PS5, if there's like any level design or anything that they weren't able to do or do as good um, in this DLC, maybe not because it's DLC, we probably won't see anything extravagantly different. Um, so, but I'm inter- still interested to see what, you know, what the benefits are of just being PS5 only. And this is a good sign. This is a good sign because even though I think we might even have one major game still going to uh ps4 like i think spider-man listen I, if if god of war ragnarok sold five mil five over five million in three days um and and part of that even though i think more was sold on ps5 a good amount obviously was on ps4 you know they got a, like a damn near 120 million ps4s out there i'm pretty sure they looked at that or even know, knew before that, that it would sell that well and with help with the, from the PS4, Spider-Man could break that. It's possible Spider-Man could break that record with the help of PS4. So I don't, th- I don't know and I don't think they ever confirmed if it's PS5 only, but I have a feeling that it's not. Um, Crash Team Rumble is a four new 4 vs. 4 multiplayer game come out in 2023. Kind of reminded me of Crash Bash, except uh, not so much mini-game-ish. Um, some of you may remember, may remember Crash Bash from back in the day. Um, looked, looked okay. I don't think it's anything that I'll, I would probably play. Warhammer, uh, 40,000 Space Marine 2 gameplay. Uh, it's not really a game I, I care about. I don't care about this franchise. Celeste Creators, next game, Earthblade. Um, that got a new trailer. Not really anything I'm interested in. Bayonetta Origins. So y'all know I'm also just just as much as I am a Death Stranding hater, I am a Bayonetta or I'm a Bayonetta hater. So just when I thought like, oh, Bayonetta three came out, we probably won't have to hear nothing uh, about Bayonetta in a long time. And then they come out with this Bayonetta Origins game. Like, come on, bro. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I wish y'all didn't. I don't care about how Bayonetta became, or I think her name is. Uh, Teresa, I don't care about how Bayonetta became Bayonetta, and honestly, neither do Switch fans. Is this what is what is what platform is this? I assume it's gonna only gonna be on Switch because Bayonetta is only on Switch now. Um, and Nintendo owns the IP, right? Yeah. So, and honestly, Nintendo fans don't care either. That's why that game sells so poorly. Uh, Hellboy is getting a video game adaptation. Um, I think it's cel shaded. It looked, eh. Looked okay. Nothing really to talk about. Nothing really to write home about. Eh, I don't. Nothing. Nothing really there, for, I think. Crime Boss? Rocket City announced with cast including Chuck Norris, Danny Trejo, and Vanilla Ice. Uh, 
I can assure you no game with this many celebrity features is going to be good. So I'm not going to spend time on it. This is a game where you're usually where you're literally just just riding the crutches of the stars that you put in the game and the features that you put in the game. The game's not going to be good. The Lords of the Fallen first gameplay revealed for Souls like Reboot. Um this is one of the Souls games I beat I mentioned earlier and Lords of the Fallen the first one wasn't very good at all. And this this and this one has been in uh development hell and they even renamed it from Lords of the Fallen 2 to The Lords of the Fallen, which I think could be a little bit could be a little bit confusing. Um but I think they kind of want to act like that first game kind of didn't exist. I think that's pretty much what they're what they're doing. Like, don't count that last one. Uh, last of Us Part One PC coming out March third. Uh, going to PC, so great. This is going to PC as it should. Um, you know they they're trying to uh, they're trying to get the Last of Us out to everybody that should and wants to experience it, right? Because this is technically a ten year old game, and we know you have the HBO series. Uh, coming out so they're at the point now where like yeah this this game was kept solely on our system and you know with the new pc initiative and effort they just want to get this game out to as many people who who want to play it um you know that that's what they want to do because you you can you can because you know as we know there's certain gamers that regardless of what game is on a console some people are not going to buy consoles um, so it's for that, it's for that base who are just not going to come over regardless. Um, and so I know, I know the, 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 the conversation going on around this is, oh, the, you know, the time span of, of console to, uh, PC has been shortened because this game came out in September. That's six months when I don't really think that's the case. I mean, I don't care either way, uh, if they shorten the time span, but it's a 10 year old game. So there was really no need to do the, oh, let's wait one year before we put Last of Us Part 1 on P. The, the reason why they, even re why they even remade the game was for people who haven't played it before and they wanted to create a more modern and playable version uh, for people who haven't played it before and people that may look it up and get into it um, after maybe discovering uh, the HBO series. So that's, that's, the, that's the reason it was remade uh for in the first place so there's no reason to wait a year returnal announced for pc so i look forward to playing this uh, returnal on pc um because i want to play it mainly because i want to see how it how it is on mouse and keyboard i feel like it's gonna be a much better experience on mouse and keyboard um like I think I could be a lot more efficient. Not that I, you know, of course I beat the game on mouse on, on on controller, but I think that this game will definitely benefit. And PC gamers are very like particular. Certain games interest them more than others. And even though Uncharted, for example, is a much bigger and 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 storied franchise and IP than Returnal, I think Returnal is going to do better on PC, right? I told people before before Uncharted came went on PC. PC gamers do not care about Uncharted. They do not like Uncharted. Part it is partly because yeah, like they they didn't buy it as much because they did you know the original trilogy is isn't isn't even on PC. But even if the original trilogy was on PC, they still wouldn't buy it. There's certain elements about Uncharted that are that is very like anti PC and what PC gamers like. Um, and Returnal, I believe, and I feel like I know what I'm talking about, stands for everything that PC gamers like in a game. So I think Returnal will, will do very well on, on PC. Uh, so Genshin Impact won, um, Player's Voice at 2022 Game Awards. And there was some debacle with, with, with this Player's Choice Awards. Like, I know Jeff Keighley had said something was wrong with the voting, and like, I think that it was like some type of trolling effort from these Genshin Impact players and Sonic players to try to try to get it to win the player voice award, even though we know Sonic don't deserve no damn player voice, uh, players voice award. But it is like something they wanted to do because Sonic fans are rabid and insane. But OK. 
Um, so Game Awards stage crasher. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the 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 winners. So some random kid just crashed the stage when uh, Miyazaki and the Elden Ring team won the award and started talking about Bill Clinton and some nonsense. And it's like, I think Jeff, Jeff Keighley tweeted that he was, the kid was also arrested. And what's his name has like interviewed the kid already. Uh, Jason Schreier had interviewed the kid, he said on, on Twitter. So yeah, that was kind of crazy and kind of funny. There was some memes coming from that I thought was pretty funny. Um, Baldur's Gate, don't really care about that. Forspoken Demo is now available on, on PlayStation. For uh, for spoken is a very uh, a lot. Of, there, it's very divisive as far as like opinion goes on it from viewing gameplay. But now people get to play it and see if they like it or not. Um, I have not played it yet. I have downloaded it, so I will play it and I'll probably uh, give my opinions on Twitter. I doubt I'll make a video, um, but definitely talk about it on, on the Weapon World podcast this, uh, this week. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to I'm excited to 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 know if I like the game or not because I've been very unimpressed and unimpressed with what they've shown. Transformers reactivate uh, some online game developed by Splash Damage. I really like Splash Damage as a studio, but I definitely I'm not gonna. I doubt I'm gonna care about this game. Uh, Banishers Ghost of New Eden announced. This is a focus uh, home interactive and don't nod. Uh, collaboration um focus is is the publisher and don't nod is the developer a new action rpg called banishers okay um single player magic first first person shooter immortals of abium they really I, I i really despise announcements that are just cinematic trailers not even any gameplay i say that every single year uh gearbox announced remnants 2 which i believe is the sequel for remnants of the ashes but it seems like they just dropped the from the ashes part never played the original uh so i don't think i'll probably get into this one but i've heard mostly good things about remnant from the ashes blue protocol um it's an mmorpg uh some surreal platformer after us i'm skimming through this stuff this is their less relevant less important stuff uh replaced some retro futuristic platformer, Vampire Survivor, which a whole bunch of people is hyping. Uh, Dead Cells got, is getting returned to Castlevania DLC, Valiant Hearts, Colossal Cave. Wild, uh, Wild Hearts, I'm very um, interested in. This game looks really good. Uh, I'm not, I've never been able to get in, in, into Monster Hunter. I've tried two of the games. And I'm just like, this This is not fun. I could never get into it. I'm hoping Wild Hearts is like a, 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 a Monster Hunter-esque uh, game I can actually get into. So I look forward to that. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2 Raids, Fire Emblem Engage DLC. I wasn't able to get into the previous Fire Emblem game, but Engage... Uh, wait, why is there a DLC trailer? Am I confusing some shit? I'm confused. Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Engage hasn't come out yet. Why are they having a DLC trailer? Am I bugging? Isn't Fire Emblem Engage the new, the brand new Fire Emblem game? Fire Emblem Engage. Yeah, it's coming out. It's coming out 2023. So why is there a DLC trailer? I mean, usually there's roadmaps for games that haven't come out yet, but a, a whole... Maybe it's like DLC, like not actual more story content or gameplay. I don't know. I didn't watch it, but that was just a little bit confusing. Dune Awakening in-game trailer. I don't really care about Dune. Destiny, don't care about Destiny. This Among Us hide and seek look cool. It's a different mode. It looked look like it could be fun. And then lastly, Horizon Call of the Mountain gameplay trailer. Um, it's similar to the previous trailer we've seen before. Um, I think I said it earlier that I ha I do have PSVR 2 pre-ordered and I look forward to playing the games and Horizon Call of the Mountain will probably be the first one I do play. So yeah. Um, and this has been my review for the Game Awards 2022. This is damn near 
a solo hour podcast. But, you know, I, I expected it to be that long. Um, shout out to those of you who actually, you know, watched or listened to the whole to the whole thing. If I was me, I would just be playing me in the background while I play some games. Um, if I wasn't me, if I was just a listener, I would be playing me in the background while I play some games. So, yeah, let me know what y'all thought about the game awards. You know, the because because I didn't watch it, I didn't get to see the flow of it. So I saw some people saying the pacing was still bad and and the flow of the show was was still bad. I didn't really get to experience that because, like I said, I didn't watch it. Uh, I just watched the trailers and saw the, and and seen who the winners were, um, and everything like that. So that actually might be the optimal way to experience the game awards, um, low key. Uh, so yeah, let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter if you're not, and uh, check out Weapon World podcasts uh, this coming week. Check out all the recent episodes we've been doing, and yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out. Peace.